So let us look at this example of a linear sequential circuit. So what we have are two inputs that we denote x1 and x2, and we also have two outputs that we denote u1 and u2, and we also have three state variables q1, q2, and q3. What we want to do now is to write this linear sequential circuit on this form here. So we want to write our next state as a linear function of the current state and the input, and we want to write our output as a linear function of the current state and the input. And our matrices A, B, C and H here is what we now want to derive. So let us first identify our Q and our Q plus in the figure. So looking at the D element, the input to the D element is our next state. So we have Q1 plus as the input to the Q1 D element. And the current state here, Q1, is the output of the D element. Similarly for the Q2 D element, the next state here is Q2 plus, and as the output we have Q2. And for the Q3D element, the input here is the Q3 plus, that is the next state function, and the current state is our Q3, which is the output of this D element. So let us first write our next state variable that we call Q1 plus. Q1 plus is what is coming here in our picture, so this is just equal to x2. Q2 plus is the sum here of Q1 that we have as an input to this XOR and what we have here. And what do we have here? Well, we see that we have Q2 plus Q3 because it's what's coming into this XOR gate here. So Q2 plus can be written as Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3. And the next state variable Q3 plus this is the sum of the two inputs to this XOR function here. So it is Q2 plus, and what is coming in here is X1 plus, because X1 comes here, plus what comes here, which is Q2 plus, but Q2 plus we know is Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3. So we can simplify this as Q1 plus Q3 plus X1. For our output function U1, we see that this is the same as Q3 plus, because this is what comes here. So we can write this as Q1 plus Q3 plus X1. And for the second output function U2, this is equal to the sum of what's coming in to this XOR here. And from the top, we have Q3 coming in. So let us write Q3 first. And then what is coming down from the left-hand side is the sum of the two inputs that we have here. So this is actually Q2 plus Q3 plus X2. So here we have Q2 plus Q3 plus X2. And this can be written as Q2 plus X2. And what we want to do now is to write this in matrix form. So let's start with Q1 plus. This is only X2. So this does not depend on the current state, but it depends on X2. So we can write this as 0, 1 in this matrix. For Q2 plus here, this is Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3. This means that we have ones in this row of the matrix and it does not depend on the input. And for Q3 plus, this is Q1 plus Q3 plus X1. So this would be 1, 0, 1 in the row of this matrix. And then it will only depend on the input X1. So we have 1, 0 in this matrix. And similar for our output functions, U1 is Q1 plus Q3 plus X1. So we have 1, 0, 1 here because it doesn't depend on Q2 and it only depends on the input X1. So we write this as 1, 0 in this matrix here. And for the last output function U2, this is Q2 plus X2. 
So we write this as 0, 1, 0 in the second row of the first matrix. And then it depends only on x2. So we write this as 0, 1 in this matrix here. So we have now described our linear sequential circuit in this matrix form where the first matrix here is called A. The second one here is called B. Then we have the matrix C and then we have the matrix that we call H. And now we're going to see how we can minimize this linear sequential circuit. And what we mean by minimize is that we want to use the same circuit and we want to implement the same circuit and the same behavior, but using as few D elements as possible.